This is Steve 87th back again. So today we're going to sh I'm going to show you a technique um, for chipping and, and rusting apart. This is actually out of order. You'll see videos later where this is not painted again. I did this purposely so I could complete the build of this auger in a three-step series. Okay, so you guys sit back and enjoy and watch the weathering happen. Hey model railroaders, this is Steve 87th here bringing you our next edition for Memorial Day, um, 933. So today, you can see here, I've got the paint booth set up. So what we're actually gonna do today is we're gonna finish by painting the auger drill bit. Now, I'm gonna do something a little different and I've not done this before. So um, this'll be new. So I picked up this, this set a while ago called Rust and Chipping Effects by Vallejo. It has several paints and I'll show you what everything that's gonna happen here. And it's got step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually do this. So the first thing that we're gonna do is they've got a German red-brown surface primer. That's really kind of cool and this is step one. So you paint the entire model in this surface primer. So the good thing is, is the primer, as well as a color. So that means that the whole thing will be primed. So once you prime the entire thing with the rust color, that looks kind of like a rust color, and we'll, and I'm doing this as the step-by-step -step now, because when I do this, I'm gonna do it as time-lapse. Um, and with all of the noise, it's gonna be better with time-lapse, so I can't sit and explain everything that I'm gonna be doing, okay? So the next step, after that is you put dark brown on, okay? And this one you airbrush on um, in the areas with the darkest of color, showing the effects of exposed metal. It is best not to cover the model completely, but to work in areas, since the change of shades will make it. So you wanna put the darker stuff and where you think it's gonna be the heaviest rust, right? So I'm gonna put it, um, I'm gonna hit some of these areas such as the top point over in this, probably the shaft, um, and maybe this shaft and all that, um, and we'll get some rust colors in there, okay? The next thing that you do, you follow it with the next lightest color. So you're going from darkest to lightest here. So this is just a regular rust color, and this all comes in a kit. Every one of these parts comes in a kit um, that you can get, and I actually had purchased this at Hobby Lobby. So all the colors that you need, everything that you need for this is right here, except for one color, okay? So then you put on the lighter rust, um, and you're gonna apply this in an irregular manner. It is recommended using photos for the best section. So just see where you want kind of your, your uh, other rust colors to be at. So that's gonna be down in this area. It's not, we're probably not gonna hit the uh, actual um, augers that much because they shouldn't be rusted too much, but I mean, you can figure out that there's just gonna be some rusted areas. Um, and then next we use the light rust. And again, this is all with airbrushes. Okay, um, and then once we get that done, we'll hit some more lighter rust areas with that, probably around the wheels, some of this area and all. So it's gonna be kind of a challenge for me, but what the heck, might as well do it. 
And then the last of the airbrush ones, we're gonna use this orange rust. And it says that this is used on small details which may have been exposed to the highest temperatures always in a regular and random manner of application. Okay, so this goes into really, really smaller areas, it seems like. So that'll probably be like right at where the turning points are. That would be their highest, highest temperature areas. And then lastly, you're supposed to use this yellow ochre. Um, and then that one you're just supposed to dab on in different places, and I have kind of a stipple brush that I can use for that. Okay? So once all of the rusting stuff is done as your base colors, right, so you got your rust done the way that you like it, then you come up and you put on the chipping medium. Now the way the chipping medium works is um, for the purpose of reproducing the flaked off paint of a model. This is an elective final step. The chipping medium is mainly applied to an area where the original color might still be visible and prepares the surface for selective paint removal. Okay, so we put the chipping medium on where we want to put it. Uh, once the chipping medium has dried, we airbrush on in an irregular manner the rest of the original color. So the original color that I'm going to go with is a red color because that's the color that this was. Um, rest of the original color, okay? Um, this technique can be used on any metal surface such as such as blue oil drums, white ambulances, yellow industrial machinery, and, and any color passenger vehicles or trains. So you just want to put so you put the base color on where you want the base color. Now remember the chipping medium you applied in different areas and this is going to hold the paint. Okay, so, so that's all that this is gonna do is hold where you wanna keep the paint. And then you put the paint on and then once that's done, um, it says next this original color is removed with the moist brush leaving very realistic rests in the creases and less exposed area of the model. Linear scratches can be made with a pin or a tooth puck, tooth, toothbrush. So once we get this painted, then we come back with a brush that's wet and we take the paint off, right? And then this is going to hold that paint that we put on in the places that we want it. And then finally, you would go over it with a matte varnish color. So the kit contains everything with the exception of paint brushes and the prime color. Plus it gives you a nice little handy instruction kit. So we're gonna see how this works um, and we'll get started with it, okay? And again, this is all gonna be in time lapse. I'm not gonna go over this again, but I will kind of show you guys how I do this as I go along, all right? All right, so we're gonna quickly go through all of those steps, starting with priming and putting in all of the different paint steps. I had a little bit of a problem trying to hold this thing up. Um, it was a bit of a tough thing to paint, um, but I just went layer and layer and layer, just like I said. The last thing that I did was is I used a brush to put the matte finish on and then colored it all red. All right, my time lapse went a little bit faster. So after taking a wet brush to this um, and got, that's what that little bucket that you saw at the very end was was uh, a pail of the water that I took off of it. And so you, the neat, the paint needs to still be a little wet. You take a damp brush. I actually used a makeup brush to make it a little bit harder. And then you get in there and you start taking the paint off. The matte medium keeps the red paint where you want the red paint to be. Um, I didn't quite do it exactly as I wanted to. It looks like I got more median paint on there than I wanted to in places. I tried to sort of dab it on there or streak it on there, but apparently I put more on there than I wanted to. But it didn't come out too bad. Um, as soon as it comes back in the screen here, you can see that there is some chonkers out of there. There's different layers and levels of rust that came on underneath there. So basically what you're doing is, is you're rusting this whole thing, then you're putting a medium on it to keep the paint on there, and then you take the paint off that you don't want. And I need to put the wheels back on it. Where'd they go? Here they are. Yeah, and some of this, kind of funny, the copper... I think in some places I didn't get all of the... Um, what do you want to call that? The primer. I might not have let the primer dry as soon as I needed it to. So the first thing we're going to do, 
So we're gonna take this steel and we're gonna paint the blades. Try this one first, see how that goes. And these, these met metallic ones are really kind of cool. Mm. That is not coming out the shiny metal I want it to be. Huh. Don't think that was what I wanted. So I don't think this one's going to work. That's okay, because I got more. That's the light gray wash. So this silver, or this steel, didn't quite work. It should be at a different way. Go natural steel. We're gonna let that one dry. And this steel is a little bit shinier. I'll try that on the other side. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, so I tried to speed this up for you guys here a little bit. So I went to what was called a natural steel. I believe it's the Vallejo paints that I'm using in the natural steel. There's a lot of new steel products that are out there, or excuse me, not steel, but metal products. I mean, there are some chromes, there are some dull aluminums, bright aluminums, and all that kind of stuff that they've come out with that really, really look good. So I decided, you know, I've got the steel out. Where do I want to put the steel? So I did the, the screw, of course, at the top that wasn't painted already. And in the back sides of the wheels, I put some, uh, put some of the steel on there because, you know, that's kind of what the back sides are normally looked at. They don't, they don't paint those in most cases. The other end was already dry. The stuff that I'd used before was a darker, I think it was called an oiled steel. And so I wanted to kind of see how that came out and it just came out too dark. Part of it could have been because of, because of the dark colors on it already um, that it made it a little bit tougher. And then of course there's some other spots that are going to have to be steel, you know, where the connectors are and all that. Um, I also decided that, um, you know, I'm trying to touch it up to make it look really nice. There's some, I also figured that even though there was rust and all that kind of stuff, there's probably still some just plain steel spots. And um, anywhere where there's moving connections and things, I wanted to paint some steel. So um, this was me painting up all the little spots and little dots here. The other thing I did, I decided to wherever the primer didn't stick... Um, to kind of cover up those spots, I would just paint it steel. So that's where you see me putting it down on the frame area and all that kind of stuff, because that was where I either didn't primer it or that's where I grabbed it and the primer came off. So, you know, and then there's other places, like I said, when you've got, uh, you know, anything that's turning and all that kind of stuff, normally it's going to come out a brighter, a brighter steel color and all. And sorry about this. Um, I switched over to doing the tractor because the tractor would have some steel spots too, just like this. So um, I hit like where the three-point connector is, some of the stuff on the bottom. Um, and then in a minute here, you'll see that I did, you know, the steps where the farmer walks up and down. He does, you know, he's got all the steps that he's got to walk up on both sides. And then I did a little bit on the front where the weights were and all that. Um, and just some little spots in here and there. So... That's when I finished off with all the steel, and now I'm going to move on to my next uh, process. Okay, this is something called oiled earth wash. So this is more of a wash, so we're going to take a brush. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I tend to like to use makeup brushes for applying a lot of my washes and things. The makeup brushes just seem to work a whole lot better. So this whole shaft got to be a little oiled. Let's take that up. Okay, so this oiled dirt mix 
um, is pretty much any place where you think you're going to have oil or oil drinks going to reach out at and all that kind of stuff. And then the dirt sticks to it. So that's kind of what the oil dirt looks like. So that's why I did the underside of the tractor where the turning modules were, you know, where you're going to get that, you know, the oil's going to run down it or the grease is going to run down it or something like that. And then you're going to get uh, dirt stuck into it because of all the different areas. So, so I just decided to, uh, to hit that. Um, so that's one of the other weathering colors that I use and, you know, finished off on the tractor. Okay. So a little black wash never hurt anybody. The good thing about black wash, and I didn't know about this, this is really what you want to do to actually get some of the contours to come out. Okay. So yeah, black wash is used for the details in a lot of places. Um, it'll make stuff stand out that you don't necessarily see. It gets back into crevices and all that so that the things actually pop. Um, there's also pointing paints that you can use that uh, a lot of people use. But for most of our models, we can probably do with just the black wash and it'll kind of um, dump on in there. And then kind of what I like to do is once I get it on there a little bit, I will sometimes take a rag or whatever and um, wipe some of it off because there might be a little bit too much that I put on there in different spots. Um, and if you lightly wipe it off, it'll stay in those cracks and crevices, which is what you were going to detail anyway. So um, that's basically me finishing up the black wash on this. And then I go and put some on the tractor as well. For this particular one, we need some of the moss and lichen effects. So we're gonna put some of those on there. Um, the only reason is because uh, of the type of um, stuff that we're actually using. So I'm just going to kind of dab it here and there. So the yellow lichen and all that, I'm actually using the types of fertilizer that they bring in in the powdered form. It's actually yellow and white. And so a lot of the stuff that you see in the barn is white. Um, but there was also some yellow stuff around there too. And then of course, just the general Northwest weather gives you moss and lichen and all kinds of other things all over the place. Don't need to do that on the tractor as much because the tractor is actually working. Rain marks we're going to wait a little bit for. Modern vehicle wash, that might be a little bit nice. Okay, turned earth. So now here are some of the things that we actually want to do. This turned earth is actually a thick pigment. So it's kind of cool because we can put it in certain spots that we want it to go to because it's nice and thick and will stay there. Okay, so some of the new paints that are coming out in the weathering lines from MIG and um, Vallejo and uh, all the other guys that are out there, um, they tend to sometimes make you thicker paints, almost like a paste-like instead of pigments where they're dust and all that kind of stuff. So I said pigment, it's actually a thick paint. So this allows you to put clumps of things in areas or heavier layers of stuff. And you know, with mud, especially uh, you guys saw some of the pictures, how muddy it is out there, it gets everywhere. So um, this allows you to put in heavier deposits in different areas and it, it actually covers, it covers a little bit differently. It's not like you're painting it on. You want to kind of dab it on almost. Um, there is the liquid paint that's, or the liquid fluid that's in there that allows it to flow a little bit more and keeps it wet. So sometimes you can use that and it, it comes out as a little bit of a wash. But in order to put like clumps and things like that in there, you dig down farther. And once you dig down farther, you can you can get this heavier pigmented stuff so that you can um, put it in more spots and, and lay it on a little bit thicker. So um, it was a little bit more important to put the mud on the tractor than on the auger because the uh, auger, well, it kind of sits in place so it doesn't move around. But anybody who's seen a farm tractor, unless the guy just washed it or washes it every weekend, which I doubt because if you're a farmer and you don't have time to wash your tractors all the time. They're, um, they're pretty muddy and, you know, there's mud and dirt all over the place in this area. So we have to make it, make it look right. So that's why the wheels and all that have, are getting the nice little treatment. 
So um, that's going to be it for the mud. And now that we've got that done, we're going to move to the next section. So um, yeah, just keep watching. There's still some more weathering to come. Get rid of the mud. Get a little bit of thick mud. Oh, no, we're not going to use the thick mud. It's not open yet. Vallejo thick mud. Ooh, that's really thick. We don't want that. That's oil thick. Fresh mud. Oh, and then there's industrial mud. Actually, I think we're going to use the industrial mud. Okay, so the industrial mud is another type of thick mud. But this is more of the mud that you find around industrial sites. Um you know in refineries factories outside areas you know where they do concrete and all that so this is going to have like the concrete mixes involved in it rocks and stones um and those oils and abrasives and other types of things that you find at industrial sites okay so didn't need it as much on the auger but you know if you think about the tractor the tractor's got all of those things plus there's the fertilizer that we're working in um, and he works in an industrial setting, so the uh, the tractor needs a little bit more mud. And we'll then use the rain. Yeah, rain will be nice because it's the northwest. So in the northwest, if there's one thing we have, it's rain. All right, so I start putting the rain on and I went, whoa, that came out way too much. Um, apparently I needed to dry brush it a little bit more. But this accident turned out to be pretty good because I just took a dried brush or even a little bit of a damp brush and came back over it and took off that rain, uh, that thick layer. And it left this kind of filmy layer like you get after you have rain on. So the rain, it's kind of important. It's okay to put it on in the dust. Um, but then make sure that you have some, some water around um, to put on another brush to take it off. And that'll give you a really nice appearance of uh, wet weather that's happened during it. So um, you can see here, like I said, this sits out in the, in the weather all the time. So it is out in the rain and all that. So it's going to have a lot more um, than, say, the tractor, which is moving during the rain or, you know, gets wiped down every once in a while and all that. This just sits there. So um, I'm just making sure that I get enough on in different places. I'm touching up in little spots and all and then going back over it again. So this was another nice color. Um, I also put it on the roof and use it again on the building. Um, I, I kind of like it. And like I said, this is the Northwest, so we deal with a lot of rain. So we know what the those types of colors look like. So it came out to a nice effect. All righty. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with the way that this showed up. So time out here. All right. So this is what the tractor looks like. A good old international harvester there and run around and then this is what we're going to finish off with with our little guy stuck in the mud okay so that's those weathered products. Now all I got to do is put them onto the thing and then weather up the roof and put in a couple more details and we're going to be done. All right, that concludes what my interpretation of this machine is supposed to look like. Thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up or a like. And if you have any questions, please post them and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching again. This is Steve87. Have a good night.